We're going to do a couple examples explaining Le Chatelier's principle as it's applied to a chemical reaction system. Uh, one common chemical reaction system is the reaction between hydrogen, three moles of gaseous hydrogen, with one mole of gaseous nitrogen. And that forms two moles of gaseous ammonia. We'll assume that we have a closed container such that the system can achieve equilibrium. That means that as the elements, nitrogen and hydrogen, are forming the product ammonia, <clears throat> the uh, ammonia molecules also crash into each other and reform the elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. Once those two rates, the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction, are equal, then a system is said to be at equilibrium. Well, Chatelier's principle applies to systems that are at equilibrium. Okay. So, the Chatelier's principle, stated succinctly, is when a stress is applied to a system, the system will shift or respond in such a way as to relieve the stress. Common stresses are and we'll uh, give examples of how the system will shift uh, temperature. So we'll see how this system will shift when there's an increase in temperature. For systems that uh, contain gases, and only those systems, one or more gas, uh, gaseous reactants and or products, uh, those systems will shift uh, in response to an increase or decrease in pressure. So let's say uh, we'll try a decrease in pressure. And then third, <clears throat> uh, another stress could be an increase or decrease in concentration of any reactant or any product. Okay. So we'll increase the concentration of nitrogen, let's say. Okay. So once the system is already at equilibrium, we will uh, apply one at a time these uh, three separate stresses. Okay. Um, in order to see how temperature will, will affect the system, you have to know which direction is what's called the endothermic or exothermic direction. Okay. For this uh, reaction in particular, uh, the bonds formed between nitrogen and hydrogen uh, are pretty strong and they're more plentiful than in the uh, reactants, so there is a net uh, release of the energy, uh, 56 kilojoules of energy for every two moles of ammonia that form. So the forward direction is uh, considered the energy releasing or exo, exo meaning out or release, the exothermic direction, which will make the system overall hotter because okay, energy is being released uh, to the surroundings and that'll heat everything up. Uh, on the other hand, the reverse direction is the net energy absorbing direction or the endo energy endo or into the system, so that is the cooling direction because energy is being absorbed from the surroundings and that will cool the surroundings which will cool the container which will cool just about everything inside. <clears throat> okay. One other thing that we have to take note of to see how uh, this system will respond to pressure stresses is to note how many moles of gas there are on the reactant side and on the product side. The more moles of gas that you have in a container the greater the volume of the container of gas, given a, given a constant pressure. So on the reactant side, we have a total of 3 plus 1, or 4 moles of gas, which at, let's say, 1 atmospheric pressure will take up a lot more volume than only 2 moles of gas, which is what we have on the product side. Okay. So here we have Le Chatelet's principle to reiterate for a system that is at equilibrium, and we're assuming this system is at equilibrium with forward and reverse rates are equal right now, when you apply a stress, the system responds or shifts in such a way as to relieve the stress. So the system will basically do the opposite of whatever the stress is. That's the golden rule of Le Chatelier's principle. So we're increasing temperature, that is the stress. Okay, Increasing temperature. This system is going to respond in such a way as to decrease the temperature. We have to relieve this increase in temperature. It's getting too hot. All right. So look, that is why we label these arrows. The arrow pointing towards the energy or the heat is always the exo-hot arrow. The arrow pointing away must be the end or cooling arrow. 
So out of these two directions, the one that will relieve the stress of increasing temperature will be the endocooling or decreasing temperature direction. So when the stress is an increase in temperature, the system will shift in such a way as to relieve that, and that will shift to the left. Okay. As a result of that, as the new equilibrium is being reached, there will be a net increase in the concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen, and a net decrease in the concentration of ammonia. Okay. As a result of that shift. Stress number two, a decrease in pressure. Okay. The stress is pressure is getting too low. The system will respond in such a way as to increase the pressure. Once again, the system is shifting in such a way as to negate or oppose the stress, relieve the stress. We're decreasing pressure. So if you look at what we already wrote here, four moles of gas, two moles of gas, one of these directions is going to cause an increase in pressure. Well, the more moles of gas form, the more pressure there will be in a given volume of the container. So this system will shift to the left again if there is a decrease in pressure it shifts from the two moles of gas side to the four moles of gas side, which will increase the pressure because there will be literally more molecules in the container, which will be crashing against the wall. So that is going to bring the pressure back up. Okay. As a result of the shift to the left, you have an increased concentration of nitrogen and of hydrogen and a decreased concentration of ammonia. Okay. Um, our last stress here in this example an increased concentration of nitrogen. Okay, So the stress is we're increasing the concentration of nitrogen. The stress is we're increasing this reactant. The sh system will shift in such a way as to decrease this concentration of nitrogen. Use it up. Get rid of it. We have too much of it. We just put a big stress on the system of increasing the concentration of nitrogen. So which of these two directions will take away the nitrogen? Well, the forward direction. The forward direction makes ammonia out of nitrogen and hydrogen, so it will use it up. The reverse direction would actually make more nitrogen, so the system will shift to the right. And we can generalize, anytime you increase the concentration of any reactant, the system will shift towards the products. Anytime you increase the concentration of any product, the system will shift towards the react reactants. So again, Le Chatelier's principle very directly is, when a, system, when a stress is applied to a system that's at equilibrium, the system will shift in such a way as to relieve the stress.